Yes. Um, can everybody see the the uh, PowerPoint? I see the top of the screen is missing on on mine slightly, but if, if it's still legible. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, I wanted to talk this afternoon about a project I did some years ago locally here with a local community as an example of, of what things are possible and the type of project or one of the types of project that the, the new geology trust would, would like to be involved with in terms of enabling and possibly sponsoring. So my talk this afternoon is about the Pneumodesmus project. Pneumodesmus being a fossil millipede that was found at Cowie in Stonehaven in the early 2000s. First of all, I would just like to show the relevance to the, the Scottish Geology Trust. This is, this is the wording of, of our promotion theme, connecting local communi communities with expertise and relevant organisations to encourage better awareness of the importance of Scotland's geology and to aid communities in maximising the value of their local geology. So the project I'm talking about this afternoon, although it is some years ago, very much is a good example of, of this kind of activity and one which I think could be um, increased very much across Scotland. And if the trust can be an agency for that, I, I would be delighted. It was all about the discovery of the fossil millipede in Stonehaven at Cowie, which is a little village on the fishing village on the north end of Stonehaven. Um, this was the beast itself. That image there is only 12 millimetres across, so it was a very tiny fossil found by Mike Newman, um, locally known or famously known locally as a, a bus driver and amateur paleontologist, but a very capable and able chap um, who worked closely with, with some of our people at the local university here. So that shows the, the, the fossil. And on the right hand side here, the key thing are these spiracles shown SP in the diagram which are thought to be the air breathing spores of the animal. Never seen before on a, on, a, on a fossil millipede. So it was thought at the time to be the oldest air breathing animal on the planet, hence the, the, the local interest. Now Stonehaven is just south of Aberdeen, a very pretty coastal village, harbour, etc. But also very famous geologically for the location of the, or the eastern location of the Highland Boundary Fault. So here we see Stonehaven Bay, the fossil locality is right around here in, in the distance and the Far Point Garden Point is where the, the Highland Boundary Fault outcrops. So here we have a very enthusiastic um, subset of the local community council who call themselves the Fossil Group who are really keen to see this, this um, discovery publicised for the greater good of the town and geotourism and, and, and a great deal of local interest. So here we are actually on the site, which I'll explain in a minute with some maps and things, but looking in the distance towards the, one of the expressions of the Highland Boundary Fault in, in, in this bay here and out to Garden Point. Um, this, this group were very enthusiastic and had really got themselves organized. They asked the University and Aberdeen Geological Society to get involved to provide the, the expertise they needed to pull this thing together. They got heritage lottery funding and small donations from a number of other um, organisations, local and Scottish, so that they had a budget to actually employ a commercial artist. This chap crouching down in the foreground, Ellis, was, was a huge uh, benefit to us. So I've, I've leapt ahead to the, um, the map um, here, a cartoon map really of, of the area. So again, we have Cowie Village here. We have Garden Point up in the far northeast, and we have the line of the Highland Boundary Fault crossing Craigieven Bay. So to the north of that, we have the, the Highland Metamorphic Rocks. We have the Highland Boundary Series, um, well exposed on the coast here, right out to Garden Point. We then have um, sediments that are a big unconformity between the two here. And we have this um, stratigraphy of sediments with the Cowie Sandstone rising up to the, the Cannon Sandstone. And the, the fossil locality are these green siltstones, locally known as the tooties. Just to note, before I go to the next uh, illustration, there's also a, a very useful marker, Porphyry Dyke comes out at this point. So that when we look now at the um, aerial view, now these are somewhat gratuitous views of the fault, which I love, but they actually do um, show the excitement of the area. 
So these are taken from a light aircraft at about 500 to 1,000 feet up. So here you can see the expression of the fault very clearly at Garden Point crossing, um, crossing the bay there. And this more oblique shot takes us to the rocks where we're actually talking about tonight in the far left. So we, ha we have the, the fault running on this line across the bay, across the golf course, where that hole is actually called fault. And then through by the, the, the chapel, there's a little chapel and, and a graveyard there. And you occasionally see more expressions of the fault according to vegetation and landslides. And then it disappears across country. So back to, to Kaui. So this is the, the Tuti area here. This is the Porphyry Dyke, a double dyke running right out there. And in between we have the old Kaui Harbour, um, which was used for local fishing, fishing vessels. So a few points to make about the geology really. Um, these sandstones are, have always been somewhat enigmatic. They're not really part of the, the Strathmore syncline. Um, um, stratification. So the current thinking, I believe, is that they are now um, late Silurian sandstones, considered to be a pull-apart basin within the Highland Boundary Fault zone. And vitrinite reflectivities um, techniques have actually shown that the, the, the burial is much less than the, the other sandstones to the south. So it is considered to be a pull-apart basin within the zone. Um, and that explains perhaps why these, these sandstones and the occurrence are somewhat different. Now, at the time of this project, the palynology and fossil studies determined the age to be 428 million years, with some precision, but possibly not great accuracy. But this is now revised to be 414 million years after the recent uranium-led radiometric dating that's been done after the, uh, the fossil was found in Kerara recently. So these are the sediments that contain the air-breathing millipede, Pneumodesmus, and it's probably no longer the oldest. Its position of, of, of that has been usurped by the Campercarid millipede that's been found in Kerala and aged by these radiometric dating methods at 425 million years. So poor old Pneumodesmus has lost its place as being the oldest air-breathing uh, um, millipede on the planet. But that gives you an idea of the location. Um, and I, I hope I've got across to you why the local group was, was so excited about this and wanted to actually do something um, very public about it. So what, what did we achieve with the project? First of all, we put a, a plinth at Kaui with, with, with this um, illustration on it. Looking back on it now, perhaps a bit wordy, but there was an awful lot of information to impart. And after a great deal of deliberation, this is what we, we landed up with. The plinth is still there in good condition. It was built by a, a local stonemason as a volunteer, and, and it has withstood many storms on the beach there since, and is, is still in, in good condition. Um, we're really very pleased with that, I think. You can see here, this is looking out beyond, this is, a, this is um, Cowie Harbour and then Stonehaven Bay um, and then south on to, to Notter, which you can't see here. We also put together a, a pretty comprehensive museum exhibit for the Tollbooth Museum at the harbour in Stonehaven. Um, a lot more material on that. You can see a lot of common things. We actually made very large posters of these aerial pictures, which was very helpful. And we had actually, we had a, a model of the millipede and we had a cast of the actual fossil looking, being lit up and looked at under magnification. That was very effective and I believe it is still there, although it hasn't been open at all this year for the COVID reasons. We did a number of other things as well. The, the two, the green and the yellow here, were banners that went to local schools and libraries. We um, advertised the fossil exhibition at the toll booth and we produced a, a big um, fold out pamphlet with, with all the information for distribution. So all in all, it was a very successful project. The community were delighted with it. We, we got a lot of exposure uh, the schools were involved. It, it, it was, was highly successful and something that I would like to see duplicated elsewhere. Um, so I'll move on now. I'm going to give you a glimpse of another project that I'm currently involved, involved with. And this is upcountry in Aberdeenshire in a place called Glen Bucket, which is a side glen to Strathdon on the River Don. 
and I've got involved in with this community, another very active community who want to do things. Um, last year they were having a, a walking weekend, so I did a geology walk for them, um, which has started a whole bunch of things happening, or would have done had it not been for COVID. So the Glen has some phenomenally um, complicated geology, igneous and metamorphic, lots of interesting Delvadian stuff, lots of shear zones, all sorts of stuff going on. Um, some samples here, the, the Glen Bucket um, pegmatite, um, which is, is massive crystals of, of um, pyroxene in, in um, feldspars. We have a thing called the Garnet Rock high up in the Glen, which contains some quite nice um, garnets, which was exploited by the local community over many years until somebody took some gunpowder to the local rock and blew half of it down the hill about 100 years ago. There's a huge history of lime burning in the Glen. There is some very precious limestone at the northwestern corner of the Glen. And one of the ongoing projects is to preserve this particular kiln and, and write a story about it and, and produce some information for the local community from something that interests me quite a lot. So there's another example. Um, I'm sure there are, are many around the country that, that, that could be stimulated. Um, and I think we'll probably find there are, there are always active people in these communities. Um, and they will all require different inputs according to their knowledge and, and circumstances. The trust, our trust aims to be an enabling organization, maybe not doing all the work, but bringing organizations and resources together and quite possibly making the connections and providing some fund, funding for the project. So I leave you with those two um, examples. Angus has one that he could talk to that he's currently doing down in, in Cove. Angus, I don't know if you want to say a few words about this one. Yes, I'll, I'll just say uh, uh, very briefly, um, this uh, I've actually over the last couple of years, uh, mostly on behalf of the Edinburgh Geological Society and Lothian Borders Geoconservation Group, been involved in three projects that have uh, prepared interpretation boards um, and I, it'd be really nice to, to talk further about interpretation boards because they're a really common thing, a uh, really common way of getting information across uh, to people, uh, but they're not universally uh, claimed. Uh, but there were existing boards at Sicker Point uh, that uh, an energy company uh, sponsored the replacement of, and we tied that in with uh, republishing leaflets and stuff like that. Um, and as part of that sort of general interest in Sicker Point, I went to the local community council. Uh, so it's Coburn's path is the nearest uh, village uh, and Cove is a smaller village so Cove and Co Coburn's path and I, I wasn't really sure what sort of uh, what response I've got but, but it was really really positive uh, people were really aware of Sicker Point and they you know, want to do more about it they see the potential for, for doing more and they want to you know, bring people to the area and the, uh, so, so there's lots of, lots of very positive but just as an aside someone said to me at that meeting he said oh by the way we've got some money and we're going to put in some boards. Uh, could you help? And that, that is just, it's just so nice to hear uh, because the money is so often the hard part. Uh, but I suspect that at the moment, this is a common story around the country uh, because uphill from Coburn's path, there's a huge development uh, of a wind farm. Uh, and the, the wind farms have a community fund and they, they give money to local community projects. So in this case, it sort of was a community council, but it's a kind of a subgroup. Uh, and it's associated with a small village of Cove, uh, which has got its harbour. Uh, and uh, what they wanted to do was they got a lot of people going to Cove it's quite well known as a as a kind of tourist spot, uh, much to the uh, disgust of the owner of the harbour that doesn't really want crowds of people going down to the harbour. Uh, so what they wanted to do was kind of draw people down the coast towards Sicker Point. Uh, so this is one of three boards that have been done and it was a magical project because the money was there, the designer was there, they could pay for the designer um, and they just needed from me uh, some text. So uh, um, I wrote a few hundred words 
uh, sent it around a few members of our committee just to get things checked. And you'll see that uh, the board's kind of got the journey through time theme. So taking people on a journey down through uh, the three ages of sedimentary rocks that are in that area. But they also wanted to use it to kind of connect with uh, the natural history of the area. So some of the boards have uh, seabirds and some of the other stuff you can see on the, on the grassland and inland. But it's just um, very, very straightforward. Uh, the, uh, you can't really tell from this photograph, but I believe, and I'm not, I've not seen it yet, because it was done, it's been done during COVID, uh, but I believe these three uh, stones are actually in, embedded. They're actually real stones that are embedded in the board, not just pictures of stones. Uh, so, and that was the designer said, oh, by the way, I've done this before. It works really well. Do you want to do this? And we just said, oh yeah, great. Let's put some real rocks on the, on the board. So uh, it's, a, it's another example. Uh, it's uh, a bit more, I guess, seat of the pants in terms of the geological input than what Don's done. Um, and uh, you know, it's, I've been involved in my local community council uh, as I uh, was, was involved in that for 10 years. And the idea of having subgroups of any sort <laughs> for a lot of community councils is really hard and to have a fossil subgroup Group. I, th I suspect that there aren't many community councils around the, the country that have that, but there are, there are community organisations of all sorts of different types. Uh, and I think often what they're looking for is just that input. Uh, so uh, if, they, if they've wanted to do something with the local area and we can make that connection and find somebody that knows enough about it to give them the information they can then use. So that's, so that's just a, another uh, uh, example. Uh, we've also just done one uh, in Edinburgh, which is connected with the Edinburgh Shoreline Project, and that's been in partnership with the Scottish Wildlife Trust. And that's another kind of common thing, I think, which is happening. There are other organisations that are planning interpretation across an area, uh, and it's great if you can find that it's happening and say, well, how about having a little bit of, uh, of geology? Uh, all of the topics we've talked about today are, I've got a strong human interest. Uh, so whether it's James Hutton traveling down the coast to Sicker Point uh, or the, the, the fossil fish discoveries in, in Wardy and Edinburgh and Don's example is obviously a very nice kind of human story of a local paleontologist making an amazing discovery. Uh, and that's what, you know, local communities like that sort of thing. And it, uh, as, as Don said, really contributes to their sense of, of, of uh, promoting their local area. Right. I'm going to stop there. Uh, I'm going to um, 